welcome back into my studio thought I'd show just a quick video of something I'm working on coming to the end of November 2021 and I'm doing this for my patreon art channel now it's quite a lot smaller than the size I normally use and that's another reason for me doing this subject so it's full wolf on that fantastic reddish rock and then I've got all these uh, grasses going to come behind and towards the back end of the wolf. When I'm doing something this small, you have to think differently than when you're doing large drawings. I normally do large drawings with pastels. And the reason I normally draw that much larger with pastels is because, of course, we can't sharpen the pencils really finely to a pinhead point like we can with colored pencils. But we can still do realism and details. We just need to think about it a bit differently, perhaps use some different techniques. So that's why I wanted to do this, this whole body wolf drawing. This is only a bit of a section of it to demonstrate how we can still get that realism. So the, if you know me from my other videos, you know I love to break things down into manageable chunks if we've got something complicated that could be elephant skin or fur on a wolf like this we need to break it down because when we look at the reference photos it can be very overwhelming and we wonder where do we even start okay so as i said i cover that a lot in detail on my longer patreon videos this this lesson when i finish it in a few days will probably be around about three hours long but I wanted to break down just a section so you can see the kind of techniques that I use. So what I've done with the neck of the wolf is first of all found the basic overall color. Now that was a gray and because it's a small drawing I just put that in with pencil but you could just as easily put it in with pan pastels or soft pastel sticks. I prefer the harder sticks like Rembrandt rather than super soft sticks okay because they can fill that too for the paper up very quickly and easily if you're not very very careful so i put that initial layer in with pencil and i rub it in quite firmly with my finger or with a paper stump if i want to get it really really rubbed in following on from that initial coloring in layer that basic color that's when i'm doing what i call the texturizing layer and that's putting in these darker marks which are really the shadow areas in between the clumps of fur now when I'm drawing very large it's the shadow areas in between almost individual hairs of fur but when we're working smaller it's more like the clumps of fur and you can see I'm making sure I'm going in the direction that is actually growing on the wall for the way it's sitting on the structure, the body structure of the wolf. My pencils are fairly sharp. They won't go much sharper than this without the nib breaking. Okay, so that's about as sharp as I go. And as you can see, I'm really thinking mainly about clumps of fur and leaving then the areas in between the shadow showing that under layer, that main color that we've got on this area of the wolf. Now I'm not putting the dark everywhere because if I did the whole of the neck, this really dark gray or, or black, then I'd struggle probably to put the highlight on top. So that's why I'm doing this kind of negative drawing where I'm leaving the areas I'm going to put the highlights on top of. And that means that I've got plenty of tooth of the paper left and the highlights, if I want them nice and crisp, will easily sit on top of this under layer. Now already as I'm putting in the textured layer, you can see that it's starting to look a lot more realistic. So first layer, base color. Second layer, texturizing. Now up here towards the top, it goes a bit lighter. This is the grey colour that I use for that base colour. And that's a pit pastel pencil. When you see the shaft of the pencil that's a wood colour like this, it's generally my pit pencils. 
my two favorite brands Pitt and Carbothello. I do use other brands but these are the ones I, I use more often than not. And I'm just softening it slightly by touching it with my finger so the hedge, edges are not really super defined and hard. Now because pastel mat holds the pastel very well you can rub it on the surface and it doesn't just smudge away to nothing. If you're using a, a soft paper or like an ongre paper it would just smudge away. Now the top parts of fur are being acted upon by the blue sky that's above and the way the light is behind. It's kind of like the blue sky almost wraps around the finer haze of fur on the top. Now that's what separates more advanced artists from beginners and novices. The beginners and novices don't normally notice things like fine or slight color adjustments. Now that's all about looking at your subject a lot, really studying it and looking at the reference photo and looking for these, as I said, very slight color adjustments. And I'm going to carry on putting that blue edging around the wolf's neck and back. Now after the base layer is done, the texturizing is done, that's when I begin my process of working the lighter layers on top. Now some areas like here on the back is really quite light, almost a white. Got a bit of rim light in as well. That's coming from that moon. Now this is a Derwent pencil, so if you see me using a pencil that's got this burgundy shaft, it always might Derwent pencil. Now they're not my favorite brand. They can sometimes snap in the sharpener quite a lot but they do have a nice range of lovely colors. The purples and the flesh tones especially are really nice in there. Now this is a Carbothello pencil. So you can see the Carbothellos they have the shaft of the pencil the same color as the nib. So that's really handy. So if you see me using a pencil like this with that grey tip to the back end, that's the Carbothello pencils. Now sometimes if you want an area to perhaps go a bit darker, you can still come back in, re-darken an area as I'm doing now, getting it ready before the highlights go on top. Because as you continue to work on the subject and the refinement, is growing on there then you get to see smaller adjustments that you may need to make and that's what happened here I blocked it in I texturize it I was starting to add the highlight and then I noticed this could really go a bit darker in a few areas so I'm just refining that as I said before I put the highlights on top Now as the highlights go on, I'm making sure I'm not covering up all the dark under layer and I'm not covering up all of the base colour that I put on. You can see my pencil is not particularly sharp. I'm not concerned about putting in every individual hair. I'm thinking of the clumps of fur and the direction that the clumps are lying. 
as they are on the back of the wolf, the neck of the wolf. Every now and again I twirl my pencil around so that I'm not creating just a flat edge on the end of the pencil. If I just hold it the same all the time then after a few strokes I've got really a, kind of like a chiseled edge on the pencil and I'd need to keep sharpening it. So after I've done a few strokes I turn it. You see I just turned it there. I lift it off the paper, turn it. That helps to keep the tip more cylindrical, more conical, rather than getting that flat edge. Now I'm putting another layer on top so I've gone to a lighter pencil and this is how we create depth with fur. Remember fur has got lots of depth to it especially on, on a wolf it's really thick luxurious it's deep you could imagine pushing your fingers down into the fur on the neck so we need to create that on this flat surface and the way to do that is to build layers. The fur on the wolf has many layers so we're going to put three, four or more layers on top, gradually working lighter. Down here under the neck is in shadow, so rather than reaching for a black, I'm putting in a dark purple, and that's going down to a dark blue, as you can see on the foreleg. Don't just assume that shadows are black, here I'm using a very small paper stump just to blend those colours in. And that's all also getting rid of any graininess you may have or I may have on the pastel mat paper surface. So that's the way I get rid of that grainy texture some people find on a sanded or a pastel mat surface. I'm just darkening it. Once I put those colours in I can come in with a black using it lightly just to darken it all and those colors will still shine through and it won't be just a flat dead looking black color. So just a few more hints of darkness here before I can start the highlights again. And remember the important thing is apply the highlights in the direction of the fur growth. The way it's lying on the structure of the animal because that's what's giving it that shape, that form. Now it's also important when you're working on a smaller scale to make sure you've got the correct amount of softness on the subject as well. So every now and again you can see I'm touching the surface, that's just softening it very slightly. Now of course soft edges are important whether you're working large or small, but particularly when you're working small you don't want it to look more like a porcupine by putting in lots of very hard edges. Now it can look like it's a hard edge if you have something very dark and then on top of that you put something substantially lighter. So you can see on the neck of the wolf that there's no great difference from dark to light. It's only really subtly getting lighter. And here I'm putting on some of the brighter highlights. That's helping to give that three dimensional appearance and also down on this foreleg as well.
Okay, so as I bring this short video to an end, hope you've enjoyed that little insight to what I've been working on. As I said, I've got lots and lots and lots of other videos full length on my Patreon art channel. Pretty sure there's over a hundred full length videos on there now. And it costs just from $4 a month and that's available all around the world. No contract, you can start and stop whenever you want. You can jump up in the tiers if you want to see even more instructions and videos. And I really think it'll help you save a lot of money with your supplies by purchasing the correct supplies and I don't use anything super expensive supplies are really um, quite easy to get normally and I've got over 1400 members all learning how to draw subjects such as this wolf elephants lions dogs cats horses you name it it's pretty much all on there so I hope to see you on my Patreon art channel really soon and I'll see you all again on the next video.